Hello and welcome to Infinity. This is an image I just took out of my bedroom window. I recently got a 100-400 lens so I thought I'd try it out and there's, we've got a bit of nice low moon there and the sheep and the trees in the evening sun. So first thing I'm going to do is do a crop. So I'm going to go to the crop tool here and go to a one-to-one -one crop which unhelpfully decides to be bigger than the picture but that doesn't matter we'll bring this down and make sure the magnet's on there so it'll snap to the edges there we go so i'm going to get the full amount of that then control zero to full size and figure out where i want this so i'll bring this across and there's a nice curve down here so i'll use that and it puts the moon about on the thirds there and in fact, I'll bring this in a bit, which will leave out that little dust spot at the top. And maybe up from the bottom, because there's a couple of little bits down the bottom here. So there we go. It's still got that curve in. It's got the moon about on the thirds. I don't worry too much about that. I'm not a over-enthusiast for that. So here we go. Now then, let's. next thing I do is zoom in close and look at things like how much noise is there. It's a little bit noisy, isn't it? Because it was quite far off and it was quite a high ISO I did it on to so I could get the speed up. See, there's a bit of noise up there in the sky. So in fact, I'll keep that in there. And I'll go to light filters and do a... Um, where is it? Denoise. There we go and just turn that up until the noise disappears here we go that'll do and i don't mind going up high as well and we'll do a bit of a sharpen afterwards as well now so let's go back to that and do a high pass sharpen and turn the radius up on this until it's just looking see 0 0.5 pixels that's kind of all you need i very seldom go above one with this then go down to a linear light. It's a bit hard, isn't it? Hard light, soft light overlay. What's going to work best on this? I'd literally look at each of these in turn. Um, maybe an overlay, I think. Yeah. Okay. Now. What I'm going to do is start separating the sky from the ground. So what I'll do here is go to channels and if I look at the yeah you know, the where are we? Red, there's green, there's blue. See the blue gives a really good separation there. So I'll reset that, come down to the back, right click. I think I had someone earlier on was playing with it. Create spare channel. There we go. So what this ch spare channel now is I can right click on his here and say load to pixel selection and this now has selected the sky. But I'm going to look down here is it's selected some other things down here. So I'll go to the selection brush, make sure subtract is on and I don't want to snap to edges and just paint away these little sheep have got a little bit, bit too much brightness on them. Where else is it? There's some up there and there's some fence posts. You'd hardly notice any of these things that you hear, but I just like to get rid of them anyway. That'll do. There we go. So now I will go to the pixel selection again, right click on that and say create spare channel again. Which put the next one underneath here so I'll take the top one off, right click on that and say rename and call that sky. And what I can do as well is select invert pixel selection and then I've got the ground. So I'll just right click on that, say create spare channel again, right click on the spare channel, rename that, call the ground. There we go. So now I've got those selections saved. So Control D, I can get rid of that, but I can use those at any time. So let's put a curves on and see what I can do with changing the colour of the sky. So I'll go to the sky one, 
you right click on that, say load to pixel selection, and then just put on a curves, adjustment curves. Here we go. And we'll now, we've already got the mask on that, so I can hit Control D to get rid of the marching ants. And what I'm going to do here, um, I don't want to over brighten the sky there. I might just flatten out a little bit, put a little bit of an S backwards S on it to flatten that. But the main thing I'm going to do is in colour. So I'm going to go to blue and turn up the blues a bit in the sky. Go to red. I'll turn that up a bit more, just give a bit of a bit more red in the sky. I'll also go to green. Because if I pull green down I get magenta. So I'm not going to make the sky green, but I can make it less green, which is more magenta. So I can put a nice there we go. Nice sort of evening glow, which kind of watch see how that goes with this and see the way in between all the tr the leaves there, it's you know the tree. It's done that quite nicely. Okie look, that'll do nicely. So now I'm going to put a vignette above all this. So I'll put in a vignette up there and doing this I'll turn it really hard first of all, then turn down the hardness to make it pretty soft, then turn up the scale to make it as big as I want. So I'm going to knock out the moon there too much a bit more there, then change the exposure back again. I'm going to keep it round so I don't need to change that. I can also hit Control J, do it again, but now increase the size even more. So I put a bit more darkness into the corner. So it's one on top of this one, just darkens the corners a bit more. Right, now then this, this moon up here, I want to bring the moon out a bit, because in that pinking it down I've made this kind of disappear. So I'm going to go to the ellipse tool here. I'm going to make this white just on top here. So I'm going to put a white thing on top here. Control shift and expand to color the moon there. So I've got no stroke on it. So I don't want any outline. But I'm going to add a blur to it. So I'll live filters, Gaussian blur and turn up the radius. On this, where's the blur? Can I see some blur? Thank you very much. There we go, and it just needs a bit of that, so it's just blurring that ellipse, so it's just on the ellipse. So that'll do for now. Oops, what have I done? Ah, not to it off. And I could type in bigger numbers there if I wanted to do that. But now I'm going to go to the ellipse, go to the hand tool so I can see it, just don't need all the dots around it, and I'm going to blend that in. So go to normal, go down to screen which was usually, but this is kind of far too much isn't it, so I'm going to turn the opacity down. There we go. And you see it's just a little bit bigger than the moon so it adds a little bit of glow around it. So uh, there you go, I think that's about all right. Just very quickly then, um, can I show you the original? Probably, kind oh, of nice I can, I got a history can't I? Uh, there, that's the beginning. And there with a little bit of a, a sky, this sharpened up a bit. You can go right into this and see this is more. You can see the change between there. So just selecting the blue channel is a really good way of getting to the sky and a bit of a glow on the moon and a bit more pink there. Okay, I hope that was fun and thank you very much for watching.